Uh, Carlos in the back, if you can pull up my last talk, please, regenerative medicine, and then we'll be done with mine, and then Dr. Bell will finish up with his two. Um, so the last one is about bioenhancement technology, regenerative medicine, something I'm very passionate about. I've had tremendous, tremendous, tremendous gains with it. Um, and it, it's expensive, but it really has transformed my practice in the last uh, five years. So it started with seeing Gary Hitzig's uh, uh, slide of, of showing that one side that he did without PRP and one side he did with it. And I was just like, wow, okay, so I, I was in Alaska and this was 2011. I just said, okay, I'm going to try this. And I started splitting my patients half and half to seeing out and wow, I was seeing significant gains with this. I was using PRP and A cell and seeing better and better results. And he said, well, what is all this you're referring to? I'll go through it. So I started with the autologel system and got great results. I, I think it's a great system. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with it. But I switched over to the angel system because it gave me both better quantity and quality of what I was trying to achieve. What does that mean? Well, essentially, you want your platelet count to be about 1.8 to 2.5 X physiologic. So in other words, if the platelet count is a certain amount, you want to double that. How do you get there? Well, based on this very confusing chart, you can, it, it, you can with a certain percent, you can figure out how much to draw. Um, I'll show you exactly what I do with my system, but this chart, I, you don't need to read through it. Um, PRP, wor uh, PPP works well, and the reason I think it works well is listening to Tony Scalfani's talk uh, last year in Orlando it, for the FACE conference. Uh, he says PPP works, activated works almost as well as PRP. So I've got all this PPP sitting around. What am I going to do with it? Now I use it for the donor area. And so I think the PPP is great. How do I exactly use it? I will tell you in a moment. Okay, I'll give you the exact recipe I use. So Acel is the brand of uh, this company. Matrisem Micromatrix is, it, Matrisem is the product. Micromatrix is the powder version. Micro is the fine powder version. I use 100 milligrams of this. Cost close to $300. Um, I just mix it all with the PRP. You say, well, how do you do that exactly? I'll talk to you about it. It's, it's a porcine exocellular matrix uh, bladder that helps with hair growth. It, it, it works. Now, I can't tell you what percent of my PRP is working or ACEL, but it, it works. Um, so how do I do it? So my mix of PRP and ACEL uh, matrix and micromatrix is essentially as follows. So I use 7% uh, hematocrit. Why do I use blood? People think it's pro-inflammatory, and it is. But the reason for that is that the, um, the talking to the, the, the chief investigator at the company, that that pulls the best percentage of, of the active portion of, of platelets in there. And you're getting blood everywhere anyway, so who cares if I get a little hematocrit with it? So I, I pull 120 cc's of whole blood in six, two 60 cc syringes, and I centrifuge it down, and I pull. They give me super rich plasma, which is just like three or four cc's. I dilute that down to 35 cc's, and then I get my 2x PRP. The rest sits on the corner, which are the PPP, okay, the non uh, the portion without the super rich dilution. I use the full 20 cc's of the PPP into the donor wound. I inject it into it, I close it, and whatever's left, I inject a little bit more in there. Uh, then I have 15 cc's of the PRP AMM mixture for the grafts, and I have the remaining 20 cc's of the same PRP AMM for the recipient sites. I basically, uh, in, in the book, I show you exactly how I mix it, but it's easy. You just mix the powder in there uh, into the PRP and draw them up into 5 cc syringes. The grafts is important. PRP does not work well in a cold environment. So what I do, which I'll talk about in a moment, I have it in a certain storage medium right up in the time of placement. And right before placement, I coat the grafts with a PRP at room temperature. Is, is there a problem with that? No. PRP must be drawn from the body before a cut because you want all the growth factors to go into that blood. But it also stays stabilized at room temperature for up to like 12 hours. So you don't need to worry about getting it quickly into the body, unlike your grafts. So I leave that sitting on the table, uh, and I shake it up, and then right before, I, I coat all the grafts before placement, and it does not make the grafts harder to place. So that's how I use with the grafts. Recipient sites, I've done them prior to recipient site creation, I've done them after recipient site creation, I get great results either way. I now do it afterwards, and I wear goggles so the little holes don't spray up blood in me, because it just makes sense that if I get all the tumescent fluid out and I just do it right beforehand, it may be better than if I did it five hours ago and it's now going away. 
So I usually do it right after my recipient sites are done and I equally place it subcutaneous plane. If you have the A cell in there, shake it up very well so that, there, that it's all equally suspended because it gets sort of lumpy before, uh, after letting it sit there on the table for a while. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Um, without surgery, I told you I don't really get as great a consistent result as I could, as I, I, I would like, that is. I usually draw 60 cc's of the blood, so that means I get half the number. With that, I mix all of that with 100 milligrams of, of A cell or AMM, and I inject in the area. To activate it, you know, you understand that it must be activated for, for PRP and A cell to work. You can activate it either um, with calcium gluconate, one to five. In other words, I put like a one into five cc's of PRP and A cell. It doesn't have to be that precise. You can use two. Uh, and I may, if I'm not worried about too much miniaturization, I may derma roll it a few times too. I'll put the ring block in so they're numb, and then I'll inject them with this uh, product afterwards. And again, I don't get as much consistent results in the last year, so I don't do this very often. Uh, activation is just, just reminding you you have to activate. This is one, just PRP, A cell injection. You go, wow, I'm going to go home and do it. I just, I don't know if I would sell you on doing it just yet. I, I, I don't, I've talked to some of my colleagues who do it, and they telling me, honestly, Sam, behind closed doors is not that consistent. Um, this is just showing a guy that I did once one treatment with without PRPA cell, then I added the PRPA cell. The growth was just so much more robust. This one you can't tell as well. It's uh, African American, but it just grew so much better. These are in the early phases when I was converting over about four years ago. Same thing here. He was a little disappointed. I came back and just blew up with my PRPA cell. So um, I also love liposomal ATP. Again, no financial affiliation with, with the company. It basically, to me, is like a CPR for the graphs. They help really str uh, strengthen and build the graphs. How do I use it? I'll give you my recipe in about two slides, so just hold off. Um, and hypothermosol essentially is an ionically balanced um, storage solution. I use that one, uh, and I'm going to tell you how I use it in a moment. It's, uh, this is about 100 bucks or so. It works very, very well, uh, and I've seen, again, an incremental improvement. Uh, and the good thing with these is I've introduce them into my practice slowly and watch my results alter. What I've seen is not a better healing phase, but I've seen faster, more consistent growth. Where initially when I was not using any regenerative medicine, I usually started to see good growth around six months. When I added PRP and ASA, I saw much more robust growth as early as four or five months. When I started add, adding liposomal ATP, I started seeing three and a half, three months. With Sometimes when I add hypothermosol, I've seen it's two, two and a half months growth. So I'm not talking about robust growth, I'm not talking about consistent growth, I'm talking about everyone, but I'm seeing better results with these products. And so every time I think, do I need to waste my money and spend this on a patient? Turns out, yes, it actually has helped. So um, that's, that's where I'm seeing things. So uh, these are my four things I use, PRP, uh, A-cell micromatrix, uh, matrix and micromatrix, liposomal ATP, or abbreviated ATPV, and uh, hypothermosol FRS. So my mix for hypothermosol ATPV, I say take a photo because this is very confusing, but I'll try to make it very slow and have you understand it. So I buy the liposomal ATB in a 50 cc increment. I mix, the, um, I, sorry, then I, have a, I buy 100 cc's of hypothermosol, that's how it's packaged. I take 10 of the ATPV out and mix it with 100 cc's of the hypothermosol because you want about one to 10 of the ATP. ATP. I then take half of that out, 50 cc's of that mixture out, and put it into like a nine by five centimeter small ramekin. My strip comes out, immediately goes into that. Because even though it eventually is gonna be somewhat diluted into plasmolide A with ATP, the thought process is that it's like shock. If the, the, if the longer time you can keep your product into hypothermosol before it gets transferred to plasmolide A, the better that graph will, will survive. And, and I've actually seen that now. Um, I don't have a study, I don't have, you know, but this really works. Then I take the remaining 50 cc mixture, remember I took 50 into the, the, the strip goes in there, and I divide it into four to five bowls, and then I have four to five uh, people that are dissecting, I have one sliver, the sliver will put the slivers and put it into that hypothermosol bath with the uh, um, ATP and split those in there, and then all of my dissection team will each have their hypothermosol slivers, okay? And then they will dissect those graphs and place them into 40 cc ATP with 400 cc, okay, we'll place that into a mixture of plasmoid ATP. 
What is that mixture? Well, that mixture, I take the remaining 40 cc's of ATP. Remember I started with 50. I put 10 over there for, to mix with hyperthermosol. I take the remaining 40 ATP and I mix it with 400 cc's of plasma light A. I stop using saline because plasma light A, I, I believe the studies are shown to be much better than saline. Um, mix all that together. I take 100 cc's out of that for post-operative spray. The patient sprays themselves every hour while they're awake. I usually don't ask them to stay up all night until that's drained. I take the remaining 300 cc's and that's where the dissected grafts go into and that's what I use to spray the grafts to keep them moist, to keep them like, like CPR. And believe it or not, it works. I think um, stem cells are around the corner. I've talked to some people here at this meeting. I think it's exciting. I don't know where it's going to go. They're doing some mice work with it right now. I, but I'm not doing anything just yet. There's no FDA clearance for it. But I think that's where the future is for regenerative medicine slash bioenhancement. I mentioned this earlier, the Microsyn, I love, uh, to me it's great, I spray patients with this to minimize uh, uh, wound infections uh, right before I do surgery. I still, I'm so anal with infection, I still pre-wash them chlorhexene the night before in the morning, then I spray them with this before I start and at the end of the procedure. So these are just fertilizers for growth and I believe that when you're dealing with these little tiny grafts, the more, no one's going to complain I gave them too much hair. They're only going to complain I didn't give them, give them enough and you know, not consistently enough. So anything that I can do to improve that, the better. Um, and again, this is all featured in this uh, second edition book coming out in a, a couple of months from now. I make no profits, all go to charity. It's Chicago coming up. Uh, I'm the course director for 14 courses there and I run my own course in November. I've got some brochures up here if you're interested. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Bill.